Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I uh, will, uh, with my partner, will talk about the Kubernetes on list the navigate to bare metal service into Kubernetes for LM and ING. Uh, my name is K. This is Alan. He's the expert from Equinix, and I am the engineer from Docloud. I have, in my work experience, I have uh, deployed hundreds of Kubernetes cluster. The Kubernetes spray is a very old project. It's about nine years uh, age. So uh, I want to show something new in the in the session, and um, uh, Alan will talk about more about the how to use IAG technology into a bare metal environment. So firstly, what is Cooper Spray? Uh, the, Cooper, uh, the Cooper Spray is a subject of uh, a sub, sub project from the Kubernetes. Uh, it can use the Ansible to deploy the Kubernetes cluster in a bare metal environment. It can use, also use Terraform to provision the uh, virtual machine from the cloud environment. So it's uh, very useful to deploy Kubernetes. So uh, there are many of ways to provision Kubernetes cluster. There, uh, there is a, a SIG from Kubernetes named the Cluster Lifecycle Management. There are many sub projects. The first three is the Kubernetes. It's the, a very important pro, uh, project from Kubernetes. It can provision uh, the uh, Kubernetes with its API server, scheduler, and control manager, and something. It's, it's uh, the best of other ways of to provision Kubernetes. And there are many uh, sub-projects for provisioner, such as KOps, Cluster API, and the Kubernetes Spray. The, uh, the KOps is written in Go, and the Cluster API is, uh, is give a way to provision uh, VM, it, uh, declare, uh, using the declare API, APIs, and the Kubernetes Spray can you, it's very easy to use to provision bare metal environment in per, for production cluster. And if you are using the public cloud, uh, the, such as the Google Cloud or AWS, the AKS or Azure uh, Kubernetes engine is a very uh, good way to use the Kubernetes. If you are developers, uh, we want to provision a Kubernetes very quick and easy, the uh, mini Cooper or the the kind is a very good way to provision. If we are commercial uh, environment, we want to operate a huge, uh, stable uh, Kubernetes environment. The commercial uh, distribution is welcome, such as OpenShift, Tezu, and the Docloud Enterprise. So uh, this is the main features of the Kubernetes spray. It can provision a very fle uh, flexible way. It's, uh, uh, written on the Ansible script. So I think uh, the ben most benefit is you, if there's something wrong, you can change the code uh, alone. And it's, uh, it's also uh, can use Terraform to provision the cloud environment, you use Ansible to deploy the, the binaries. And it's uh, very e useful to provision a very um, high availability clusters. And next uh, sessions, I will talk more about heavily, uh, high HA part. And it also can use for upgrade, config, and uh, it's useful in many Linux distributions. So if you, uh, I think the uh, most uh, important, point, uh, important point of the Cooper Spray is there are many, uh, many options we can use. We can use in many cloud environment, such as AWS, uh, Equinix, and so on. And it support many, uh, distribution of Linux, almost everyone, such as Red Hat, uh, or Fedora, Ubuntu, is uh, it Debian, or many others. And uh, it can support many CRS, such as Container, Docker, CRI, Gango, and Kata, Yuki, and CNS, Calico, Cilium, and uh, Marco Elan, or Flannel, and Kuber OVN and the CSI, and also there are many add-ons such as MetaRB, Ingress, and the Kubernetes VIP. The most awesome things of the Kubernetes spread is you can choose any of, uh, of the options and uh, combine them together 
and uh, use a script to deploy them, them together. The Cooper Spray is not only can uh, deploy a cluster, it can also do the full lifecycle management of cluster, such as uh, upgrade, config, and a uh, scale node, it or even uh, reset, uninstall of a cluster. It's, uh, it can do all of the things, lifecycle management. And it can also use the backup and restore with a ETCD uh, snapshot. So, uh, uh, what's the, re uh, the release cycle of the Kubernetes spray is uh, about uh, the Kubernetes spray will release uh, after the uh, Kubernetes release uh, in a month almost. Uh, so this is the support matrix. Uh, we support about three versions, and we will uh, release a new versions uh, in the, in a month. So uh, every uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, mini version release, the Kubernetes spray will release. Uh, and next, I will talk about some details of the Cooper Spray. Uh, if we are uh, you, uh, using the cloud environment, uh, we can use a Terraform to create a VM. Not only VM, but also the network, such as the load balancer and the VPC. So we can, uh, there are many of uh, Terraform script included in the Cooper Spray, so we can use a command Terraform init to, in, to init the cluster and uh, apply. Uh, then we will install the Kubernetes with Ansible using one command, the Ansible uh, cluster, uh, to deploy the Kubernetes cluster. That's, that's the way to use the Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes spray. And this is, this is the cloud provider we support. The, the, the many uh, cloud providers we are support. So, uh, as many users are using the Kubernetes in an uh, air gap environment. Uh, they do not, the, the environment cannot connect to the internet. So the, uh, the Kubernetes spray can support it natively. We provide a script to generate the offline, Linux, uh, offline package Linux, uh, uh, packages, li generate a list, and uh, uh, we can use it to generate the package list. And then we use another script to download the files, uh, include the binaries and the, the image into the, into the uh, host. Then we can package it as uh, uh, about uh, 300 uh, megabytes, then transfer it into the air gap environment. So we can, use, we can use the package to install the Kubernetes in the air gap environment. Uh, 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 additionally, uh, information is that the Kubernetes spray do not touch any of the operation system package, so we also need an ISO file to, uh, to install the, the, the operation system package, so we can use it in an air gap environment. I think it's a great, fe great feature of the Kubernetes spray. Another uh, thing is Docker C is a special case. Uh, the dependency tree is very complex, so uh, so so it do not support Docker C, but it can support the container D and others. And uh, uh, there are another thing about Kubernetes Spray is it's private uh, awesome CI test. Uh, every uh, pull request we private into the Kubernetes Spray, uh, we do a lot of tests about uh, forty. Uh, Test cases are used to 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 pass in the every PR. Uh, uh, many of the operating system and many of the CNIs we do a, a test. Uh, thanks to the sponsor of Equinix. Yeah. The, um, there are some best practice to use the Kubernetes spray. Uh, especially in the environmental and the open uh, offline environment. We need to uh, use the time synchronized to uh, to ensure so the Kubernetes spray uh, support it. We can to sync the time using the off uh, in offline environment to ensure that the etcd and the Kubernetes and work uh, work better. And uh, for some uh, large scale uh, Kubernetes, we need to configure the kernel variable, uh, uh, such as especially for network and. Uh, uh, kernel PID, so we can support uh, some features to uh, to support to customize them. Uh, 
Uh, another thing is high availability in a production environment. High, uh, uh, HA is very important. So the Cooper Spirit uh, private uh, best practice to configure that. Uh, we can look at the picture from the top to the bottom. The the uh, the, Cooper, the Cooper Spirit can use the Cooper VIP to if we are in a parameter environment. The Cooper VIP is very useful uh, to to provision a VIP for the control plan so that we can, uh, the Cooper CTR or other uh, IDE or something can use the VIP to connect to the API server, control plan API server. If we are in cloud environment, we can also use the external load balancer to connect to the control plan. So then control plan, there are uh, Kubernetes API servers and schedulers and con uh, control managers and the ETCD. The ETCD can work as a cluster. Uh, we can also support the ETCD out of, out of the control plan node. It's also, it's, it's, it, we, it's also uh, option, but it's not very, not default. Another thing is that we can set, we set, uh, Kubus Spread set uh, NGX and HA proxy in the worker node. The NGX, uh, NGX uh, can do as a proxy for the API server. So the main, well, the, um, uh, the, the Kubernet into the, Work node can connect the API server with the NGX proxy, and uh, also Kubernetes proxy can also work in it. It also based on the container D. Another thing is that uh, the, uh, the we also set a uh, in set a uh, cron tab into the Linux machine to uh, renew the cert in the every month. To, in, to ensure that the uh, cert do not uh, expire. Uh, recently, we do a new feature that we support the Ansible collection. The Ansible collection is a, is a package manager of Ansible, like a Win or APD in the Ubuntu. Uh, so the, uh, the Google Spray is also can work as the Ansible collection into the uh, in, into the Ansible. So it can be, we can uh, use a config file to download the Kubo Spray and uh, you, it can, work, can also work together with other Ansible collections with some config. Uh, if we want to uh, harden a cluster, make the cluster more security, they are also very uh, easily. We provide a, a document to, uh, to introduce how to config uh, Kubernetes more security. Uh, we can enable the audit log and uh, some, um, some other security config to support uh, gardening the cluster. So it can be past the uh, CSI, CIS benchmark. Recently, the AI workload is uh, more and more useful in the Kubernetes. So, uh, well, I think the most different between the is this that we support we need to support the GPU and the more AI tools of the uh, Kubernetes. So the, uh, there are uh, some discussion and the roadmap for the uh, uh, Kubernetes Spray to support the GPU, and uh, there are a, di a big difference between the GPU workload, uh, AI workload, and the web applications. The most I think one is that we need uh, the AI workload need GPU and its CPU is load is often very high. And the web application needs um, more load latency. And the, the AI workloads is often work as a batch job. So this is the whole picture uh, shows my understanding of uh, AI organized the Kubernetes uh, cluster. Uh, we can look at the uh, picture from the bottom to the, to the top. Uh, the better level is the infrastructure, such as the uh, bare metal machines with GGP, GPU or cloud machines. We can cloud machines. We can use Terraform to create to provision the GPU instance uh, in the cloud. And the next is uh, Kubernetes uh, support the GPU features. Uh, most importantly, I think is NVIDIA uh, GPU operator. It can provision the NFD or MGI or uh, other features. Uh, for Kubernetes or even Kubernetes or DRA. And it can also use the uh, NVIDIA GPU driver to, to uh, into the Kubernetes. 
And then we need a batch job scheduler, such a volcano of scheduler packing and a, a queue is, is very useful for job. And then, and then up of the top of the uh, layer is the AI framework or uh, machine learning operations, operators. If we install uh, 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 Kubernetes, uh, GPU operators into the Kubernetes, so we can very easily uh, use it. We can declare with, uh, with a Coda, Coda uh, image and then we can also declare the uh, it's a, uh, in the resource limit one GPU or two GPU uh, uh, in the limit, so it can the scheduler can provision the port uh, into the machine with the GPU. The GPU toolkit uh, with the GPU toolkit. The GPU toolkit is uh, is very useful. It can to change the container DE uh, config automatically and uh, and uh, and uh, and, and, and enable the GPU features into the node. Next is the advantage use of GPU. Uh, the first is MIG. MIG can partition the GPU into many parts of uh, many instance, uh, instance. We can support multi uh, port into one GPU. And then ne the next is the Kubernetes. World. We can also use the virtual machine with GPU. And, and we can u also use the the uh, GPU uh, exporter, it can, the matrix can be connected with the premises and it can, it can be shoot with Grafana. Uh, the Kubernetes library is a huge project with many of script. So uh, in, uh, it's, it's, uh, there, there are uh, many Ansible script and uh, uh, recently, we are some, there are some discussion about we don't we we use Herm or Ansible with the add-ons. Uh, the, there are some benefits of Herm. It can I think the best of it is it, it maintains the, by the original project itself. But there are also some challenges because the, uh, there are a lot of script uh, recently in the uh, group spread. So migrate means bridge change, and uh, the Ansible uh, uh, the benefit is uh, it our template is. Kubernetes spray. It can very. It's ready for air grab environment. It's an uh, important feature of Kubernetes spray. But the challenge is the uh, huge, huge, uh, maintenance load workload. So the next step of Kubernetes spray is we would to make some add-ons with uh, Herm, uh, such as Argo CD or uh, some upper layer add-ons and the lower such as CNI or uh, such things. We still use the Ansible. Okay, uh, let's not, let's. Uh, uh, Alan will talk about the uh, IG part of this session. Thank you. So, if we look at the um, when we add the RAG into the um, the whole AI lifecycle, so you can see um, there's many um, components in the ref AI lifecycle uh, workflow. So what is important for the RAG model is that you need to, when you do this workload, you need to interact with the user. That means uh, the response times um, is um, becoming important than the traditional training, just training to the LLM, which is more than more or less than a batch, a batch job. And the importance of the latency or the interaction time with the user um, also being largely affected by the, um, the magnitude or the, uh, con con how to quantify the, uh, the whether it's large or low um, small workload. So if you look at this diagram, uh, it's showing the, each of those components um, being uh, trying to quantify it in terms of, for example, the storage size and the hardware required, such as uh, GPU and uh, CPU resources. So for the RAG model, um, you know that um, one of the most important uh, uh, factor is the vector database, uh, which um, will be con will be uh, the storage size could be very huge. Um, uh, in go, it could go to petabytes of data when um, you have a large 
um, documents, image, or other data need to be put into the data lake for revitalization. And the consideration for the um, RAG inference in the vector database, there is importance for the size in also in terms of the type of storage is very important. So for the um, type of storage nowadays, um, you have uh, all fresh. You can have all fresh storage. You can have um, level attached storage. Um, so you will need to consider which type of storage you want to consume when you need to uh, handle a large, very large capacity object um, based um, storage for the vector database. And it could grow, uh, and you will need to foresee the size will be grow up much more larger and larger uh, when the times uh, when the times are being uh, be, uh, being lapsed for a pe large period of time because of um, because of different types of document maybe lead to update for different versions and put into the data lake. And for the storage strategy, um, uh, we really need to think about a number of factors, which, which, which will be including the um, selection of the um, storage um, in the different um, um, life cycle. So, um, and it also includes the um, initial phase of the AI cycle, including when you ingest the data, you may need Coring some of the um, data, uh, so some of the data from different sources, so you will reach a huge um, storage as well in the very front end of the cycle, and you will need to consider the holistic approach. Um, holistic approach may be including very uh, realistic, maybe the cost may be a factor because you, uh, when you consume different model from different platform, there may be different uh, cost model you will need to put in a pay, uh, put into the place, and when, you, when this come to petabytes of data, the cost will be a major factor for the uh, RAG inference. The data management strategy, how do you manage the data? Uh, how do you do the housekeeping? Um, it's also uh, uh, very, uh, very important. And the last but not least is the uh, optimal storage location. So when you crawl, try to crawl the data from different source and you need to prepare the data for uh, RAG and put into the data lake, and you will need to uh, interact with the LM, LM, um, uh, model and to get and then provide a response to the end user. The execution location um, for the storage um, Put put into the whole life cycle is very is become very important, and you are not talking just about moving megabytes of data. You may be talking about moving maybe um, gigabytes or terabytes of data for the RAG inference. And for this, and and for the RAG workload. A number of um, a number of uh, benefits for uh, when you deploy this um, using bare metal, and with the help of cruise braid, um, we have four benefits list here. One is the uh, one of that is the resource efficiency. Um, that you can un uh, for bare metal surface, you can unlock the full potential of hardware by directly assessing your Kubernetes. Um, uh, workload to the um, to the hardware and the storage um, access. It it will eliminate the overhead for the traditional virtualization um, type of access, and the uh, direct access to the physical hardware. It really helps to lower the latency for um, getting the data, and you will gen. You could potentially generate a faster response to the to the end users. And bare metal surface also help to optimize the cost and you do not lead to uh, you will you could eliminate the virtualization black box um, by 
by having direct um, relation with the hardware that could that could uh, have better performance against um, those workloads. And last one is the physical isolation that could help in case you will need to do a internal or external audit. This will, this is all different uh, type of architecture, and you will not. It, it could be um, each of the server could a single tenant, and you do not subject to. Uh, you will not need to subject to external interference or interactions. Uh, when it's deployed, like um, virtual environment, you may be uh, having inter interference from another tenant. So here I will give you some uh, two major example uh, how we compare the uh, deployment for bare metal service um, uh, with Kubernetes uh, against the when you deploy the Kubernetes on the virtual machine, the cluster. So here, um, I set up the, um, uh, first we compare the CPU benchmark. The CPU benchmark is, um, I, uh, we did use the GitHub, one of the GitHub uh, contribution um, by Alex, uh, which is a workload written by Python to calculate the pipe up to uh, up to ten thousand decimal places, and each of the job will repeat ten times, and each uh, it when each job complete, it will give the uh, time being uh, used um, for each calculation, and we and and using this Python script. Um, it will do the repeat the job for ten times, and we calculate the average. So here you can see, um, here we show the bare metal cluster. Um, the average time is around twenty four seconds, and for virtual machine cluster with the similar configuration, which we use uh, sixteen virtual CPU, sixty four gig memory for bare metal uh, workload. We are also using um, 16 thread, eight physical core with um, 64 gig memory and using the same um, operating system, Ubuntu. And you see um, the virtual machine cluster perform much more slower than, uh, than we want the Kubernetes on bare metal cluster. So with the Kuspray uh, help, um, the bare metal uh, the deployment of bare metal cluster will no longer be compressed because you could use the Ansible workload to automate the um, deployments. So it will eliminate, have to eliminate the advantage for the deployment using VM cluster. But uh, you can get the benefits by uh, uh, enjoying the benefit uh, using bare metal. Another comparison that you, we use here is for the RAM latency. The memory latency is also very important for the um, LLM with RAG workload. So here we do use another tool called SysBench. SysBench is very, also very um, popular tool for performance testing in GitHub. And we do perform, how we compare is that we try to wait um, first test, we, we try to read, retrieve 6,400 gigabytes of data um, to the, uh, from the storage to the, mem uh, to the memory. And then the second job we, we compare here is that we write, try to write the data from the memory back to, uh, from, uh, from the storage back to the, uh, from the uh, back to the memory. So here you can see uh, we also using the same comparable uh, worker look. Um, you can see the uh, bare metal cluster is the latency is um, also significantly lower than we deploy have the same deployment in, to the VM cluster. 
So actually for the performance testing, we could um, establish other uh, test type, uh, such as vector database performance, the throughput performance, um, you could actually uh, try, uh, depends on your actual uh, RAG LMM workload, you could uh, establish your own testing method uh, to do the comparison. Uh, finally, uh, let us intri uh, introduce the community of the Coop Spray. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, um, uh, many, many, a very amazing community from all over the world. Even if uh, we, we, well, there are about thousands of developers have, develop, have contributed code to the project in uh, 550 uh, release. And we have uh, 7,000 of uh, com commits now in nine years. Uh, a very glad thing that there are many new and community contributor uh, contribute to the project. This is the uh, new reviewers uh, in last year. And uh, they are, uh, a, a very good thing is the very, uh, uh, old contributor has already returned the project. So this project is it's uh, very active. So we also call volunteers to, uh, to help the project grow uh, more popular. Thanks. Uh, uh, we, we, do, uh, we want some questions uh, about the session. So uh, for, for this, uh, how much pull installation are required to deploy all those keep flow, et cetera, uh, after we deploy in the, the Kubernetes using keep spread, I think we still need to use another way to deploy keep flow or those AI and RAG stuff, isn't it? Uh, the, the, the core components is included in the, in the group spray and you, uh, we, we also are working for the uh, GPU operators now, and then the, it can, the Kubernetes can provision uh, the main part of the Kubernetes. And if we want to uh, deploy the IAG or LAM part, it's of applications, we can, uh, it, it's not provisioned by Kubernetes spray directly, yeah. Yeah. For the yeah. rest, uh, we still we need to use a keep full way to deploy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's not in uh, whether there will be in the roadmap feature for keep spread. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I have a question about say if I deployed a distributed app like AI agent or IEG app. I need to access a remote process from one other process, like do some finer grained control, say let's get the other process data or some other functionality. How can I get the, get the access? So if any, any APIs to, to call? Uh, you want to access the, the application deployed in the Kubernetes, you mean? I know. Uh, I have a distributed app, distributed app, and which includes multiple processes, so, and deployed in multiple paths. And I need to, from one path, to access another path's process to get, to get the control or state. So how can I yeah. do that? Uh, uh, the the pod in the Kubernetes cluster can communicate each other with the uh, its pod IP or cluster name. If we want to access from outside of a cluster, we can use the the meta or B, or some or in, ingress to access the pod. So it's via the IP and port, not like function calling or object accessing. Uh, yeah, yeah. In Kubernetes. Uh, 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 it can only for the 
for the IP level. If we want to the function level, you, uh, I think uh, the east two or some gateway is, is uh, good for it. Some EVA or cone can, can provide the RPC. So, so it's uh, important. So that's why it is important for you to consider the execute location to find a place that you could easily interconnect different uh, AI distributed uh, the distributed application together, either publicly or privately. Privately, maybe using maybe consider some provider that could provide software defined interconnections so that you can have more flexibility to choose uh, what we, watch, whatever you want depends on, for example, the latency, the cost, performance factor. Yeah, I get it. So, so in the graph that you give is the, the IET graph, the pipeline. So I need to wrap each of the components as an independent service or like wrap it with the ingress uh, yeah, it depends on whether this workload is managed by you or you need to manage by third party. If you manage by single party, you may put into the single cluster, right? If it is actually uh, if a third party, you may need to have some sort of access uh, and some federation in between the, for, the, for the data. And in this, in this case, in this case, you may need, you may need a, 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 a choose a location that deploy what you could control and then give with the have the location um, uh, easy able to easy to access and 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 do access control uh, for other workloads that may not be controlled by you okay I see thanks thank you okay okay thank you thank you everyone